Hey y'all. Hi. I know. I know. <laughs> I bet you're wondering what's going on over here. Let me tell you. This video is a collaboration with one of my most inspiring internet friends, Hot Mess Tom. Here's what we did. We each sent the other. What did I call it? I think it was like a detailed, exciting, yet realistic life scenario. Like X happens and you have to get ready for it. So it's like, what are you going to wear to this event on this occasion under these? circumstances, right? So Tom sent one to me, like this little paragraph that's like, X is happening and you have to get ready. And I sent one to them, like a little paragraph that's like, X is happening and you have to get ready. In the video, you're going to find out what they told me to get ready for. And you're going to see me go through the decision-making process of what to put on my face, why. There's a lot of aesthetic decision-making. There's also a lot of practical decision-making because I was trying to really go through the motions of actually getting ready and trying to to put myself together completely. And then you can go to Hope Mess Tom's channel and find out what I served them, like what I wrote. They're gonna read aloud my paragraph and I'm also gonna read aloud their paragraph in the meat of my video. If you're not already following Hope Mess Tom, I mean, obviously this will be your introduction to them. You're welcome. I'm really excited to see their channel grow. They've got the personality, the talent, the work ethic, the charisma. If you happen to be new to my channel, well, then welcome. You're here for a really exciting video. Both Hope Mess Tom and I make beauty content that, you know, is honest about the excitement about new products and how that can feel, but that is mostly focused on loving the makeup that we already own. So that beauty content on our channels is about the use of makeup more than it is about shopping for makeup. And now, without further ado, let us get into the meat of this video. All right, y'all, are you ready? I'm ready. I am really excited to create this look and put together this outfit. I feel like Hot Mess Tom wrote for me the best possible scenario for this experiment, the thing that's gonna allow me to really let loose the most and spread my wings. So this is what they wrote. Your phone buzzes. You assume it's a text that you don't need to respond to. That is very true to life. But on the second buzz, you realize you're receiving a phone call from your new bestest friend, Hot Mess Tom. You're a bit confused because you never gave them your number, but you answer tepidly. That's also pretty authentic. I usually answer the phone tepidly when I have to answer it. Hate getting a phone call. However, in this scenario, it turns out to be worth it because this is what Hot Mess Tom says on the phone. Girl, I got us on the list of an awesome alternative drag show. It's in the basement of an old industrial warehouse. Performers like Bitch Puddin, Abhora, and Landon Cider are performing. No, no, you cannot wear a Baba sweater. We have to blend in as we have reputations to uphold. Okay, I love you. See you soon. Bye. I am completely prepared to do the most. I actually really wish that this was something that I was actually doing, so I'm going to be kind of living vicariously through myself as I prepare. I'm going to do the makeup first, and then I'm going to decide what the outfit will be. When I'm in a situation like this, all sorts of practical matters spring to mind, and I I feel like that's kind of the point of this thought exercise. A specific scenario like this, an actual setting, like an actual event to which I will go, it gives me a set of parameters that I then tailor the look to. Hot Mess Tom specifically said we have to blend in because we have reputations to uphold, so I am being required to dress for the scene. And that's really exciting artistically, you know what I mean? It's like I get the chance to kind of go wild and let my inner drag queen out more than usual. I mean, <laughs> she comes out every day. But then there will also be these practical matters, like it's likely to be dark. I love that. I love thinking about what the lighting is going to be like somewhere and putting on makeup that suits it, that like takes advantage of it and also suits it. So it's likely to be dim. That means that perfection is out the window, right? I'm not going to be seen in the light of day. And there are also likely to be sort of spangly lights, like 
like dim lighting, stage lighting, maybe smoky lighting and that kind of thing. And there is a lot of makeup that looks absolutely spectacular, is absolutely at its best in that kind of lighting. Also, because it's going to be so dim, we'll all be seeing each other, me, Hot Mess Tom, and all of their awesome friends who I assume are going to be there. We'll all be seeing each other in sort of broad strokes, you know what I mean? Like seeing the fields of color and texture, the general shape of what's there, rather than a close-up zoom in on like skin texture or something. So it's basically all of the fun and drama and none of the stress. And here's where my mind immediately goes. I am gonna take my hair back down. I want wild hair for this look. I'm gonna be dancing at an alternative drag show, right? So I really want the whole wig, the whole mane. I just pinned it back so that I will have like a clean canvas of my face. Because I'm gonna have my hair down and it's gonna be flying around, my first parameter is that I want really, really shining, glossy, glowy skin, but not with products that that are going to stay tacky, right? I really want to use powder and powder products on the complexion. So I'm gonna prep my skin with this new product from Merit, which is a really pretty sort of hybrid moisturizer, skincare, makeup prep thing. It's a dual phase watery essence, which is something that I traditionally really like. And I feel like the price is decent. My hot take on this is I don't feel like it's something that I would specifically go to the Merit website just to order. Like it's not an absolutely revolutionary must have product. But if you are going to place an order for Merit anyway, you know what I mean? If you were like planning to pick up a couple of lipsticks and you decide to follow through with that, I feel like this is a product that's worth taking a chance on if it's in your budget and if there's room for it in your life. I already had some skincare on today, some morning skincare, but I just wanted my skin to be really moisturized. Basically, I want to cancel any chance that any flake of skin is going to show up. And so that was why I use that product on top. I'm going to let it sink in a little bit. And while I do that, I'm going to prime my eyes and the area around my eyes because that's where I'm planning to go hard. Okay, my skin feels really, really ready to receive makeup and to treat makeup well and to be treated well by makeup. I'm going to do something I'm actually not sure I've ever done on camera, but that I do in real life, which is this is why we do things like this, right? I'm going to prime different parts of my face with different primers. So for making this skin itself incredibly glossy, but not dewy and tacky. Nothing beats the Auric Glow Lust. And I like using this basically as a primer, especially now that I have the shade Morganite, which is such a great shade for my skin. But I don't want every single crevice and plane of my face to have this reflective quality. So I'm just specifically priming my cheeks, my nose, the tip of my chin, Cupid's bow, middle of the forehead, and up onto the temples. And then I'm gonna take the Yves Saint Laurent New Balm, which is still very moisturizing and has its own glowiness, but doesn't have any reflective particles in it. So it's much more of a neutral finish. And I'm gonna use it under the eyes and the marionette lines on the sides of the face where I have some texture and on other parts of the forehead. I know for a fact I'm gonna get some fallout and have to clean it up. And it will be but the work of a moment to wipe fallout mixed with those priming products away and to kind of blend in or add a little more. But if I put on complexion products, then it'll be a whole thing when I get fallout. So I'm going to start right in on what I think is going to be the focal point of the look, which is the eyes. I think I want those sort of bushy, messy, dark brows. So I'm going to use this product that I've been testing. It came in PR. It's by this brand Gen C, and it is a, brow, a liquid brow powder. It's one of those like fiber building, brow pomade things. I haven't used something like this in a long time. I've been using like brow laminating products, but I used to love them. There was like a CoverGirl one I used for a really long time and I'm actually pretty into it. Let me show you what it does. So I'm trying my best not to get it on my skin because that makes it look messier than I prefer. But just brushing it through the hairs, it like thickens and darkens the individual hairs themselves and makes the brow look much more filled in and gives me the ability to shape it a little bit, like shape it in sort of a casual way. It ends up looking really filled in and darkened, but more natural than my brows usually look when I do kind of like the stronghold gel pomade and then fill in with a pencil or something. Okay, hopefully that looks even. I've actually ended up sitting here fussing with the 
them for a really long time today. Let's move on to the fun part. What I want to do is to put a whole bunch of quite dark, creamy, glossy looking eyeshadow all over my lids, buff it out, and then layer on a lot of reflective stuff. We'll see how I feel when I get there, but I have the Danessa Myricks Chrome Flakes. I have some loose glitter. I have the Lethal Liquid Eyeshadow in Bandwidth, which is really shiny. But first I need to lay down a base of sort of sculpting with, I think like black and, and pewter. So I'm gonna zoom you in a little bit and play. Actually, I zoomed you all the way in. So I'm gonna start with this eyeshadow from the Pat McGrath Holiday Quint that I bought because I haven't really gotten to use it. I usually use these with a brush, but I'm just gonna lay down the base with this. Just softening the edges of this. In a way, this is like claiming the center of the lid for this bright shade so that when I go in with all the black and dark colors, it won't eclipse the lid too much because I'm going to want to retain some of this in the center. Okay, now I'm going to go in with Victoria Beckham Onyx in my outer corner, lower lash line, everything. And I'm going to use this incredibly useful refer brush, the 26. Laying down a base of this black, kind of creating a falsely receding spot right here where my brow bone juts out by putting dark shadow there. And I'll go through later and blend it. I'm going to blend the edges with the 14. Okay, what I need now is a very black eyeshadow. Here it is. And here we go. So I buffed out kind of a larger surface area of that black, and now I'm going back, building it up right in the outer corner so that it becomes super saturated right in this spot right here. I'm gonna put some of this dark purple eyeliner in my waterline. And now some more black eyeshadow on the lower lash line. I'm connecting it on the outside. Now back to the fluffy brush. I'm gonna clean up a little bit of this stuff. I'm not too worried about it now, but just so I can see how it's coming together. Okay, it's coming together just how I would have hoped. It's not going to be done until after I've done my complexion because I wanna take some of what I put on my lids down onto my cheeks, but I do wanna put down one more foundational piece. This shadow from the Pat McGrath Midnight Sun Palette, an extremely wet look eyeshadow. I put it on the center with my fingers and now I'm using this fluffy brush to coat this part where the black eye shadow sort of fades out into my skin. I want the entire eye area to look glossy at the show under the lights, but without being physically wet. Okay, that's our starting point, and I'm gonna go back and finish the eye look again once there's more on my face so that it can all be blended together because the cheeks and eyes are basically going to be one. The under eye area, the priming under there, has actually held up pretty well. I'm gonna start with some green color corrector. This is the green color corrector from EXA. I want to retain the glossiness of the skin in those key areas. So I'm going to go with thin layers, a thin layer, hopefully just a thin layer of a full coverage foundation, the one from RMS that matches me so well. The more I can color correct my skin before I go in with that, the better the chances that I'll get away with just a thin layer. Okay, we are somewhat color corrected. We're still glossy. Here's the RMS foundation. It's a great match for me, and I've found that the pump is really not it, though. But that's not what I was going to say. I was going to say that I found that it is actually a bit on the matte side. It's a beautiful finish, but I think it's going to be just the thing to counteract how very, very glowy the entire face is right now. I've been having the best luck with this when I mix it with the House Labs Triclone because this is so skin carry. But I actually think that tonight I'll prefer the sturdiness of this product on its own. So I'm going to tap it all over so I don't overdo it. And then I'm buffing it out really softly with this soft brush. It's the BK Beauty 13. But I'm not worried, I'm not covering my cheek because it's going to be covered with blush, right? So I'm, I'm really just putting this in the places where it's going to be the final product, maybe except for powder. Okay, so that's a thin layer. I think it's going to 
probably enough. I mean, my skin, my neck is still looking quite white, but I can balance that out with bronzing or blushing products later. I'm gonna do a little bit of spot concealing. Just under here, I have these very stubborn spots, but I'm really not too worried about it because, you know, all eyes will be on the eyes. At least that's my plan. I'm going to powder selectively. I'm testing this Make Beauty powder right now. I usually use the Kosas powder, but that's definitely not the most mattifying. It's like that mochi skin powder, which looks beautiful for a film, looks beautiful for a day. But I think I might need a little more help. I want to stay a little more matte in certain areas tonight, so I'm going for this one. And I'm just going to do marionette lines, sides of face, where I have texture again. Setting the spot conceal down here, but not the tip of the chin. Most of the forehead, and right here under the eyes where my pores tend to be the most noticeable. I'm also powdering my neck so that so that it will take the powder blush or bronzer better later. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna use the Kevin Aquan Neo bronzer on this big fluffy brush, the whole thing, tab it off quite a lot, hit the neck just a little, and then with the lightest side in the middle, I'm just gonna do the barest bit on the cheeks because again, I don't wanna compromise too much what's underneath. This is a really finely milled powder. It will give me a little bit of sculpting and also make sure that the blush doesn't grab. It added a little bit of health back, right? A little bit of flush, but without overcoming that dewiness. And now I'm gonna wear Flirtatious, but I'm gonna stick with this really fluffy brush and I'm gonna keep tapping it off because I don't want it to build up to be too pink and I want it to be kind of like a soft wash that's quite high. Again, this color isn't gonna be too vibrant in the dark, basically, you know what I mean? So it's sort of doing like sculpting, blushing, blending, everything. I'm gonna take this, is it gonna be this? No, I'm gonna keep using the big fluffy brush that I was using, but this time I'm not gonna tap it off. I'm just getting the tip in and I'm gonna apply the blush over this entire outer area of my eyes kind of just tapping. It is helping with the blend. Also creating this sort of like color center for the blush draping right there. And obviously helping make everything more cohesive because we're connecting the eye look to the cheeks. And remember my hair is gonna be down. So it's gonna be kind of like covering how intensely pink and dramatic that is. Now it's time for the fun part that we've all been waiting for. Uh, which is like finishing the eye look. But you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and put the Ami Cole lip gloss on because I think it's what I'm gonna end up wearing. Oh, but I wanna line my lips really quickly. I'm gonna do lips really quickly because they're just starting to feel a little crusty. Here's what I, the lips are like not the key to this look, right? Cause I'm gonna be having drinks and dancing and it, it's probably gonna all get worn off. So it's a really casual thing. Little overlining underneath, little overlining up above and the Amicole gloss, which I actually may not have reviewed yet when this goes up. Stay tuned, it's coming soon. The Danessa Myricks Chrome Flakes are notoriously wet. They can disrupt, pick up what's underneath them, and so I wanna be careful. I got some on the back of my hand, and now I'm actually gonna use a brush because I think that that's probably the way that I can be the most delicate. Okay, that's a good start. I'm gonna try for a thin layer of this Lethal Cosmetics product, which is really, really shiny. I'm gonna see if I can get some glitter to stick to it. So I'm building it up on the back of my hand too. I'm also gonna use a brush for it. Okay, that really took us there. It will look way better at the club than it does under these bright beauty lights, but you can see exactly what I did. I'm gonna try to apply lashes. Oh, let's put on a tiny bit of mascara first. I'm gonna cut these and just use the long parts in the outer part of my eye. So they're really just sitting on like the outer edge of my eye and they're not the most skillfully applied, but they'll stay. Okay, and that's the overall look, drag show Hannah. I feel like the brief has been met in that my skin looks really glossy, right? And you can imagine if, it, if this area is like reflecting and light and it's kind of desaturated because it's dark, that's going to be very effective. I think the neutral, glossy, messy, kind of sloppy lip is totally working with it. And I can definitely take this product with me in my pocket and like reapply it without a mirror. Let's get the hair down and see what the effect is. Just like glossy, shattered mirror, reflective surfaces, 
pretty clean skin and something that I can wear in a dynamic situation, right? Dancing, moving around, having my hair touch it is gonna be totally fine because everything's dried down and set. Let's complete the look from head to toe because that was very much the brief. This is also like a fashion moment. And I definitely issued Hope Mess Tom a challenge for fashion when it came to their video. I gave really specific circumstances, like the season, the weather, there's like an indoor outdoor situation. They went a little easier on me because it doesn't specify the season, but I'm going to kind of say it's now. It's fall. And here's the thing. I think that if I were just me with my resources and I were going to this show, I would probably wear like my standard clubbing outfit, which is this pair of skinny leather look Citizens of Humanity jeans that I have high heels, like sky high heels, and probably because of the season, like a long sleeve bodysuit or a long sleeve cropped shirt. I'll go ahead and put that on now and just see how I feel in it because I feel like that's the first thing that my mind went to when I saw the challenge and I thought it through in my mind. So yeah, this is totally the kind of thing that I would wear. All black, cat suit vibes, probably this cropped leather bomber jacket that I got at a sample sale in LA a while back. And you know, jeans are great because there are pockets. You can like shove a credit card down into one of those pockets, tight pockets, and it's gonna be pretty secure, shove a little cash down into one of those pockets, check your coat, and you're good to go. So I find this to be like a really practical, comfortable, sleek thing for going to a drag show. And in fact, I have worn this exact outfit to a drag show before. I feel like in this situation, the makeup is the thing that's making the statement and the outfit is just kind of like a sleek chic backdrop to that and I really feel like I can move feel like I can dance and also I don't feel like I'm gonna mess these clothes up right they're like a spill a bunch of sweat other people's scent all over these clothes is gonna be okay with me because they've already been through the ringer however <laughs> right now I happen to have in my possession temporarily a wild dress by the brand Selkie I have it because because I'm doing some Instagram work for the brand Newly. It's like a clothing rental service and they sent me some things to use to create Instagram imagery for them. And this is one of the dresses. I chose the things because I was like the creative director of the project that I was doing for them. So I chose this dress to represent a trendy silhouette. If this were to happen today, if Hot Mess Tom were to send me this text today and we were like going to this drag show for real today in my life, one one thousand million percent I would wear this selkie dress because I don't have anywhere else to wear it. I don't think I probably am going to wear it, but I'm going to wear it for you now. Let me show you the distance to which I would actually go if this were a realistic situation now. This is what I was wearing. If I wore this dress, I would be borrowing Joe's leather jacket because it's voluminous enough to go over top of it. Also, Joe's leather jacket has pockets that zip. That's also a really good thing to have when going out to an event like this because she's a little bit more secure. And you may be able to tell that I'm wearing this bright coral bra underneath this dress. This dress can totally be worn without a bra. It's secure enough and comfortable enough for me and it looks fine, but it's not secure enough without a bra to tuck something into it and have it stay. And without the jeans, I don't have pockets, right? When I changed to this dress as my outfit plan for the event, I lost all of those pockets that I was planning on using. So I'm going to have to find another way to keep some cash and maybe a credit card tucked away on my person. And the best place I've found for that is inside of a bra. So I put a bra on underneath the dress for that express purpose. She's practical. She's practical at the drag show. Do you think I'm doing it? Am I blending in? Am I upholding our reputation? I feel like it's especially a serve with these by Oriel nails. Am I okay to come with you to the drag show? Am I holding up my end of the bargain? I feel ready to go, I'll say that. I'm ready to go right now, let's go. Couple of other details. I am eschewing jewelry. I just feel like hair is everywhere. It'll just get caught on my mask if I have to like take a mask on and off if I get it in and out of an Uber, for example. I mean, I'm not wearing any like hoops or earrings or dangle earrings or something. It's like hair instead of jewelry, basically. Same with rings. I love wearing a whole bunch of rings, but for this, it's just, I, I just care about, again, broad strokes, glitter, texture, shine, skin, silhouette, legs, the drama, the dancing, the movement. 
you know, I'm really like in my skin. So I'm okay. I, I'm not just not wearing jewelry because this is only a thought exercise, sadly, and not an actual show that I'm going to. That actually would be my choice for this. And shoes. I have this pair of black pumps that I have owned for like maybe 15 years at this point. They're quite high, the heels, but they're really broken in and they're as comfortable as a pair of shoes like this can possibly be. I'm okay dancing all night in these shoes. I've done it before. I know myself. I was a tango dancer for 10 years, so it's like a part of the repertoire of my body. You know what I mean? However, if it weren't, I wouldn't foolishly wear these shoes just for fashion, not knowing how they're going to make my feet feel after a couple hours and not bringing it back up or whatever. I think actually the safest thing to wear with this outfit would be a pair of chunky, comfortable boots, lug-soled boots, Chelsea boots, something like that that you know your feet are going to be really comfortable in. I think that would look good with the, this dress as well. I just love a fierce heel. I love the chance to wear a high heel and dance, and this would be that opportunity for me, which I don't really get that often anymore. So that is it. I really hope you enjoyed this video, something different. Let me know what you think of the process. Let me know what you think of the final result. Let me know what you would wear if you were invited by Hope Mess Tom and me to come to an underground alternative drag show with us. If you need something to do during makeup playtime tonight, maybe you can just do your version of this and, you know, post it on Instagram and tag us. Obviously, a huge thanks to Hope Mess Tom for doing this with me and for coming up with such a banger of a scenario for me. This just filled me with joy on so many levels. I also cannot wait to see what they come up with for the scenario that I gave them. So, click through to Hope Mess Tom's channel. I'll try to make it so that their video comes up as I'm fading out. I'm going to go take some pictures for Instagram. Thank you again for watching. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 